welcome welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for being here i hope you and your family are having a wonderful time and here i am like always on this video will give you a big a big idea how you can make a custom center console this console belongs to the malibu it is a clotted car and i will show you i would say 70 percent of the whole process if you are new on this trade this might be totally new for you if you have been working on this trade for a long time ago i bet you you already know this process and thank you so much for supporting my channel just one more thing i am not going to show you how you can make a template out of a chipboard or hardboard because i have some video related to center console and on those videos i show you how you can make a template or pattern this is the wood that i will use it is a half inch thickness and it's a press wood. I will put that speaker, those cup holder in there. You will see the whole process, my friend. Those pieces of wood will keep the center console in place. Sometimes you have to screw to the floor the center console and this time I am not going to put it with the screw. Right there will be a piece of wood and you will see it. At the end, you will see it. There will be a speaker that will be wrapped with black vinyl and right here on the back, I will make a small packet with a wrinkle and that will be at a black vinyl. I'm going to start cutting the wood. I didn't show you how you can make those templates, but that is easier. So I start cutting the wood and using a circular blade. You can use a jigsaw. Just make sure to protect uh, your uh, eyes with the uh, goggles and put something on your nose because it's not good to bringing all those kind of thing i am not going to show you how you can cut everything i just giving you an idea so i am using the jigsaw too i cut that one that one is belong to the front section of the center console and this belong to the side i will cut four pieces like that one you might asking why four pieces when you only need two well because you will see the design that i will create that's what i need four pieces and I am using the circular uh, saw and right here because it's not straight I am using the jigsaw tool it is so necessary when you are making uh, this kind of project you can make everything with the jigsaw yes you don't need a circular blaze, but if you have it, that would be better. So I got uh, this piece. I'm going to cut three more like that one. And this is the front piece. So I will cut one more side and then the other piece that is going to be on the cup holder section. See, I had the four pieces already and this will be the design. I will put a speaker in there so I am I am using the template. And then that is the side of the speaker. You have to make sure to draw it onto the wood and then you have to cut that piece of wood. Take your time, make a rise. So that is the radio so that wood. then I'm using the jigsaw and there I already cut the hole I will cut the other side like this one I put the speaker in there that's the kind of speaker that the customer wants he said he will replace it later for a better one but that's the side that he want in there I am making with a real bit a hole on those four corners because I need to cut that piece of wood. That is for the stereo. The guy wants the stereo in there. I don't have the stereo with me, but the guy gave me the dimension. That's all what I needed. I don't need to have the stereo with me. He said he will put them on later. So I am using a small circular blade. That's so easy with this tool. Then I combine with the jigsaw, especially on the corner. Okay, I cut up that piece already. And then that is the from uh, 
that center piece, that top center piece, I had to put two cup holders in there. The customer want a plastic black cup holder. To me, this will look better with chrome, nice cup holder. But I know why he want black. He say if he don't like, he will replace it later. That's why he say. I have to make the hole in there. And I am using a, a circle of a saw. And then, you see, I put that template on top of the wood. I am marking that into the wood. There are a lot of different ways how you can mark it. You can cut those pieces on the template and then just put them on the wood and drawer. I am making this way. If you see, if you see somebody working differently, that doesn't mean that person is doing it wrong or I am doing it really wrong. It's, it's about uh, a style. Then I am drawing it onto the, onto the wood. See, it's getting the same shape that it was on the template, and there it is. So now just we'll get a small uh, piece of um, one inch this to make those corners rounded. And then I will cut those pieces of wood because I need those holes. Okay. I will cut that piece. I will use this as more uh, cut it. Oh, on the back, because I will put a packet in the back. I didn't show you that, but I know if you are making the same thing, you will figure out how to make it. That is for the packet. And there is that piece. So then I will start cutting this one. And same thing. I used a small circular uh, saw. So Okay, then I will use the jigsaw. And I got that piece of wood. I will use that piece of wood, so I put them on the table. And I will use this piece of wood too. As you can see, I will cut sand it a little bit that piece of wood how much do i have to sand it all depend the thickness of the material that i will use so like for example i will use vinyl in there i have to cut a little bit if you have a router it's better to use the router i have a router you will see me using later but if you don't have it just make sure to sand it whatever the material thickness is that's what you have to send. So I got that one and I will put it in. And you can see it's kind of loose. It should be loose. Would you wrap it with vinyl? That would be tight. And on this one, I will cut it a quarter of an inch. You might ask him, why a quarter of an inch? Because that will be the shape of the metal mesh on top of the speaker. That will be a metal screen in there. And I am using the router. The router it is perfect for this. You just have to know how to use it. 
and I untaper that piece of wood. I will make another video re related to the router and all bits are so important to have the right uh, bit. And there it is, you can see it. And I will make the same thing on the other piece. So simple and easy. I know not everybody had the resources to buy a router. And I got those two pieces. And I will do the same thing on the packet, the outside. Why I am making this? First, I am making this because it looks better and then it is easy to wrap it with vinyl. It is way easier to wrap it with vinyl. You can see it, taper. And let me see, I replaced the bits already because I need to cut dips on this piece. This is just a template for the metal screen or the metal mesh. That's just for the metal. Then I will throw it away that piece. Okay, I made two, the left and the right. What else do I have to make? Oh, I will cut them on this, same thing. I made this table for my router, attach it to the table that I always use. That is attached, I just have some install them on there, have a shock, and I am doing this for the cup holder too. And there it is. And for the stereo, I will do the same thing. Just I will get tips into the wood. And there it is. So now I will replace the I will replace the bits because I go into a uh, I will adjust a bit because I'm going to make a, a just make a little bit on the all around you can see that's a little bit that's not that much and I will cut inside with the drift different bits the rabbit bit why I am doing this because the speaker will be in there. See, it's a different cut. The speaker will be in there. And I'm going to do this same kind of cut where the packet will be and right there. There will be the packet and I want the material to be flush to the wood. So I will do the same thing on the top and on the back. You might asking why on the top and then on the back? Because you will see what I will do later. Okay, I got the top. Same thing right here. Do I have to do this? Ah, uh, it look better. Believe me, it look better. It will look better. So I got all those pieces of wood. Right there, I got the metal screen in there. And what else do I need? I have to make a like a box for the molding the speaker mesh. And I have a different box. I have a, for a six inches speaker. I have a different, but I will make a box just to show you how you can make it. See, I am cutting, I am giving 18 by 12 that way you can make one and you will see later how I use it and then I will cut like six pieces of wood and I will taper on the top inside this is just an idea my friend in just an idea just keep on mind that okay I got those two pieces of 12 inches by 18 
then I am cutting six more uh, small pieces. I got those six pieces already and I will put a staple in there. I am not putting glue, I just will put a lot of staple because I have a different boxes and this it doesn't require too much pressure on the side so that's why I'm not putting uh, glue but if you don't feel confident you can put glue and that is that's all what I needed to mold uh, molding the metal mesh okay we got that one we got all those pieces of wood and now we start to uh, put in all those pieces of wood together you can use uh, make sure to use a uh, a wood glue if you are going to put a speaker if you are going to put a, a big base in there uh, put a staple then put a screw a fiberglass it is mm, all the pen how powerful it is that that sub that you're going to put them on there And this is where the cup holder will be. And then using a big clan just to put this wood together. And then I put a staple. Same thing right here on the back on the side. Okay. I will put more staple. And then on the back, I didn't I didn't show you, but I cut a piece of wood that will be located on the back. And same thing, put a lot of staple. And then I remove this clan, and that is. Then I am sanding it. There was like a corner, now I unrounded it because I don't like corner in there. And same thing all around. I don't want sharp edges on there, only on the top. So this piece will be on top right there. And I draw two lines that will be around the stereo, then on the middle of the cup holder. This is the panel that I will use. Then I will use a quarter of an inch thickness foam just for padding. And this is the black vinyl that I will use right there and on the pocket plus on the piping. I am putting a, a little bit of glue just enough to hold that two pieces. And there I had a piece, then I trim it a little bit. Then the design that is on the wood, I will copy to the vinyl. I put in a little bit of glue, just enough to hold it. And then here I go. I will use a silver, a feature silver ink. You can remove this ink with a heavy duty degreaser or sometimes with a gasoline. I don't recommend you to use a lacquer thinner. Lacquer thinner is too strong and you can damage the material. Will be two lines, quarter of an inch, the distance between one stitch to another one. And there it is. It is hard to see it to the camera, but I can see it clearly. Just put the square in there. This it is crucial to be exactly in the middle of the stereo. Cannot be more to the left or more to the right. And 
after this I will take it to the sewing uh, machine and the thread that I will use is the T210 for this and there it is so let's take it to the sewing machine T210 black thread is the one what I am using this has to be straight exactly on top of the line if you don't have a skill to sew straight make sure to practice it before I always I always recommend you to practice it always always That is just one stitch. And I will do the same thing on the other side. And then I got almost done, not yet, but almost done. Put in one more stitch. Then I will cut it. Then I will make a knot underneath. Just pull those thread. You can see them on there. Make sure to make a nice knot and put a crazy glue. Put a glue just to make sure that, that knot is not going to undone later. Okay, I am putting glue. I am not going to put a more padding enough with that quarter of an inch font. I'm putting glue and then make sure to put that stitch exactly where you draw the line if you have been, uh, if you are making the same design. This it is so important. One little mistake right here will be so notable from far away. So I just cut the material like this, for the where, where the stitches, and there it is, and then I will do the same thing right here. I know for sure if it, that line is exactly on top of the mark, and on the top side too, that will be exactly on the middle. And there is where the cup holder will be located. And I will put some staple. Very important this part. Very important the part. Just cut it. It has padding in there. I will remove that padding. You will see it later. For right now, I just put a staple. And I will put one more staple on the back. Maybe at the end I will remove those staples. And then right here. I will cut them on there. Just because I want the material to uh, mold into the wood easily. Okay. Wherever I not wrinkle, if you fold the material, make sure that doesn't show. You have to be everything hiding. And same thing on this side. I am not going to show you there everything. I already give you an idea on that side. Now I just trim in the vinyl because 
I don't want the excess material to be in there. That will be in the way. I just cut it. And I will put uh I will finish the front and the back section of the center console. Okay, what is next? I will put a glue right here because there is the cup holder. I am not going to cut it right now, but I will cut it at the end. That will be at the end, right here. I'm just cutting the padding, and then I will put glue, and I will put some staple later. I will put a mark in there with shock, and you might asking why? because I'm going to cut, make some cut, and I want that cut to be half inch away from that mark. No one quarter, half inch. Why half inch? I am using a half inch wood. If I would use a quarter of an inch wood, that would be a quarter of an inch that cut away from the mark. And then because it had glue, I just glue it. I got one side, and same thing right here. I cut it, then I fold it. This material doesn't stretch, eh? Don't think it stretch a lot. No, it doesn't stretch, it's just two side stretch. If you are doing this at a leather, you have to uh, taper more, because some leather it doesn't stretch. It's like if you are using a good leather, like Napa, like a relic leather, those ones are good leather. Um, you don't have to tape, taper the wood a lot. If you, but if you are using a leather from Keystone or Veteran, those, uh, most of those leather, it doesn't stretch. So all depends on the material that are you using. And now I'm putting some staple right here, like I say. all around there so I got the part so now I am working on this I put the outside piece yet to figure out where the other pieces will be on that box so I just wrap it because I put the piece on top I just wrap it remove the top piece and put the small piece on the bottom then I use a chalk and draw it around I am using a mountain tape because I will use it that stick on two sides, two sides stick tape. Cutting some pieces, then I am using a quarter of an inch welcor. Because I'm putting that one on the side. What is the purpose of using that uh, welcor? Well, just uh, making sure to keep the same uh, space or the same distance all around. That is the purpose of that uh, quarter of an inch welcor. I drop one piece. Drop the other one on the other side and drop the other one on the other side and like that. Just making sure to keep the distance all around equally. So that is equally. What is next? I put in those pieces of tape on the other piece of wood. That piece of wood will come out and you will see it. Okay, I drop the other piece of wood and then create pressure. And look what is going to happen. And there is the piece of wood. That's what I want. I remove these uh, small pieces of piping. Then I will get the metal mesh or the metal screen. You can buy that thing in Amazon, eBay, or any stereo supplies. So because that metal screen have a design, so make sure to. Uh, running the right way see I put that piece of wood on top I hold it then I put that piece of wood on top and then I will take it to the uh, press shop machine right there if you don't have this kind of machine there is another video that is coming related to the center console, how you can do this manually. And you will see, it will be not different of the result. 
making by hand or using this kind of chat press machine. I just put the wood in there and create pressure till I'm molding the screen. You can mold in anything, any fancy design with metal mesh. See, I'm creating pressure and that was pressing, then I release the pressure. I remove those ways. So simple. So simple when you had that right tool. But I will show you on another video how you can make those that thing manually. And you will see it. it will be not different. That will be in the next video. So I got this. It is a little bit big. Always cut it with extra. That way you can trim it later. And that is the piece. I will put a, a trunk lining on there. A lot of people painting or wrap it with vinyl. I will put a trunk lining in there because I don't want to see the wood color. I want to see nice in there. That's what I am putting trunk lining. Then I trim around. Okay, and I put the speaker in there. That is the speaker. I will put a, f I will hold that speaker with a uh, four a small screw. And there is. This will be right there. Okay. Now it is time to start working on this piece. That metal will be in there. So I will wrap this uh, with uh, vinyl. But first, I sand it too much. To be honest, I sand it too much. You gotta be careful when you sand it. If you sand it too much, you will see a gap between those two vinyl or between those two pieces. And I am putting a quarter of an inch highliner in here just to seal that gap. And that is, I will wrap it with black vinyl. I am not going to put a padding on the top, just the wood. And then I will do it the inside first. A lot of people do the outside first and then they work on the inside. I am doing the inside first. And then I will cut them on there. If you cut uh, the material too close to the wood, you might see that cut from outside. So make sure to don't cut it too close to the wood. Half inch or a quarter of an inch to the wood. All depend how thick it is the wood that you are using it. So I got the inside and I am going to start working from the, to the outside but first I need to trim this vinyl. That piece is on the way. Now it is time. I will put some staple in the end. Um, Sometimes I cut it underneath but this time I didn't. I will put a staple just making sure to make it flat that piece. Any uh, wrinkle should be underneath. Nothing should be exposed. So I am going to put a staple and then I trim that excess material. This is vinyl, heavy duty vinyl. This vinyl doesn't stretch at all. This black vinyl. And there is that piece. Now Trimming a little bit more, making sure. 
and this metal will be there right there a lot of people hold that metal with hot glue or crazy glue I always use a staple uh, and that staple that I use is a quarter of an inch I just make sure to don't go through it if you are using a quarter of an inch uh, wood uh, whatever staple you use make sure to don't go through it I put them on there you can start see how it will look I'm going to wrap this piece of wood with um, uh, vinyl, it's gray vinyl and then I will put a quarter of an inch uh, foam or padding you can use a closed cell phone on this piece too it look good it look my own opinion with a uh, closed cell phone it look better than this that would this one look good too and I am cutting with extra on the bottom and on the front then on the back and on the top I am cutting even to the wood and I am cutting that front same thing right here okay check this out I going to hold that piece of wood with a staple or with a screw so in order for me to hold it with this with the staple or glue and I don't want that screw or that staple to expose or to see from outside I going to wrap it like this I put glue then I glue it on there then I will glue it on here right there I don't worry that much about the front part and on the bottom part because I will unglue it later see I don't worry that much I just hold it with glue right here is where I'm going to finish so right there see wrinkle and I'm paying attention to that wrinkle right now that will be come out at the end he has to then I am trimming remember I make a special cut in there with the uh, rabbit bit same thing right here because I want the material to be flush in there I want to be even to the wood same thing right here where the uh, packet will be I'm going to finish that piece too I make a round in there because it is uh, easy to wrap it with uh, leather or vinyl when it's corner uh, you can do it but you have to be more careful there will be a pocket a black pocket see there are some wrinkles and that will be a uh, camera dying and I am trimming all right here this is just an idea guys keep I just re remind you that the wrinkle and I will do the same thing right here cut the material one inch or inch and a quarter away from the wood then I make some split a uh, half inch or quarter of an inch from the wood Okay. and then I glue the material a lot of people use a staple they don't use glue they just staple in there uh, I use both
and there is I put the black piece in there and fit good so this uh, this is a black vinyl I will make a piping in there to put them on there and then I will use this black vinyl to make a pocket you can just get the measuring tape measuring the top and the bottom and whatever uh, you're gonna take when you fold the vinyl to put the elastic make sure to give it the extra if you are going to make some pleats give the extra I will make some wrinkle so um, if you have 8 inches I will give 12, 12 inches that's more than enough to create a nice packet with wrinkle and I just cut it I will cut two pieces because there are two panel with pocket and I got those two pieces so now it is time to take it to the table uh, to the machine and first I will use the piping wrap with black vinyl 1A piping that's the piping that I am using I don't want to use a one quarter or less than 1A no nah. And then I put in another stitch. That piping it has to be half inch. From where I cut it to the piping, it has to be half inch. Then I'm folding right here and I put in a stitch. I will put elastic inside. And that is the elastic that I use for the Ferrari uh, convertible top. I use that kind of elastic because it is so strong. So I saw the piping and I saw the pocket. So now it is time to put this piping in there. You saw me cut him on there, right? If you uh, didn't pay attention when I used the rotter on that section, then rewind the video and see it, what I did with the rotter on there. That piping has to be flush uh, with the wood. What happened if I don't uh, make that special cut in there with that rubbery bit? Uh, it's not going to happen nothing. It will be hard for a customer to notice. But if you show uh, the center console to a guy who has been working on this tray for the entire life, he might notice. just draw two lines in there that will be the where the packet will be uh, located and then I, I create a wrinkle I don't want that many wrinkle so that's more than enough I have to uh, divide those wrinkle equally and then I will staple on the barrel This is a half inch thickness wood, so don't use a half inch uh, long staple. One quarter is more than enough. Okay, then I just cut it, and this be flush even with the wood. And there I had the packet with wrinkle. I just cut two pieces of vinyl and then I will staple into that wood. Uh, Sometimes I put a chipboard on top of that vinyl, but this time I won't because that will be facing the uh, other piece of wood. So it is not necessary. I got him on there. Look how beautiful look that thing. Look nice. So there it is. So check this out. I'm going to undone the binder on the bottom in order for me to hold that piece of wood with a screw. I'm making sure and I will put one screw in there. I will put like five screw. One more right here. 
whatever you think it is necessary to put a, a screw. I recommend you to put a screw, not a staple. With the screw, it is easy to remove it. And one more screw right here. So there it is. After that, I will put glue on the vinyl, then on the piece of wood to glue those uh, pieces together. And make sure to remove any wrinkle. I will put some staple in there. And you can see how beautiful it looks. So I am holding that piece on the corner with staple. Then I trim the excess vinyl. And one thing I forgot to put those like pieces of wood that I will hold this center console on place, but I will put them on later. So there is that one already. I will put I will hold that black piece with two screw, more than enough. Make sure that screw that you use. Uh, don't go through it. Make sure that I put one more screw in there and there it is that piece. There it is. There is the packet too. I will cut those holes for the cup holder later. That will be the last thing. So one more thing right here. Um, I will put those wood right now. And this is the two pieces of wood that I was talking about. One is called right there, and the other one is called right there. The purpose of those pieces of wood is to help hold the center console on place. That is the purpose. Sometimes I hold it with screw, but this time the customer don't want a screw. So that keep it on place. Now it is time to wrap the other side of the center console. I'm not going to show you the other side. Just keep in mind that that will be the same process. Wrap that piece of wood. Then cut the material. Same thing. Same thing. It's like the opposite. And that is the center console. Like I said, I didn't show you the whole process. I showed you one side completely. By uh, you watching me doing this side, you can figure out how to do the other side. And you can see the metal screen in there look beautiful. If you want that metal more exposed, uh, the piece of wood that you will use to mold it, it has to be tallest. That's, that's all. And there are the two cup holders. And there are the pocket. And there it is done, my friend. I love how the gray and black. I love that combination. The interior is gray and black, and then the paint on the car is black, so it looks beautiful. The style is not that fancy compared to some other center console, but it looks beautiful. There are some center console that uh, are from the dashboard to the uh, all the way to the back seat. Those ones are time consuming and require a lot of patience and experience but keep in mind if it's something will consume a lot of time and will require patience you have to charge a lot 
Why? Because you cannot change dollar by dollar. No, you have to make money. If you ask me how long did it take me to make this center console, took me between five to six hours. That style is not that hard, but require a little bit of experience to do it. A little bit, not that much. Remember, if you are learning, maybe it will take you a whole day or two days, but you will make it. You will make it. Just be patient. Practice. If it didn't, if it doesn't come out at the first, try one more time, and you will see it. You will get it better and better and better. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, hit the notification bell. Why I recommend you to uh, smash the notification bell? Because every time that I upload a new video, you will receive a notification. That way you keep updated with my new content. So thank you so much for watching this video and see you soon.